Hello and welcome to everybody on cloud fitness. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about linear regression algorithm in machine learning. So before moving on with this video, I do recommend all of you to connect with me on LinkedIn and I will leave the link in the description box as well. Now, basically in the previous video, uh, you know, I do recommend watching my previous video because it tells you about a lot of basics of machine learning. So we have already discussed that machine learning is divided it into two types, supervised and unsupervised. We have discussed about how supervised machine learning can solve the classification and a regression problem, right? Now, in this case, we are going to talk about linear regression algorithm, which is an algorithm that will help you in solving a regression problem so you can see why i am showing you this particular chart so that you actually know where does linear regression problem comes so it comes in over here under supervised machine learning so it is an algorithm that helps you to solve a regression problem so in case you want to understand more in detail you know what a supervised unsupervised classification binary multi-class regression problem then in that case i do recommend watching my first video now you know this is also the slide from my previous video where i discussed about what are the few uh, algorithms under each of these categories so the linear regression is the one which we are going to discuss today so when we talk about linear regression right what exactly it is so we have already seen through the flow chart that it is nothing but it is a supervised machine learning algorithms right because in supervised machine learning algorithm you know that you know uh, the model is trained from a labeled data set right we have a labeled data set we have the input as well as output in case of supervised machine learning algorithm we pass in both the input as well as the desired output to the algorithm uh, to the model and in that case what happens is model learns you know the output the model learns what it has to derive from the input that is provided because you have already provided the output as well so that in that case even if you provide some new set of data points as an input it will be able to give you the desired output right so that is what your supervised machine learning was all about now linear regression is again a supervised machine learning algorithm that learns from the labeled data set you know, and it maps the data points to the most optimized linear function which can be used to predict new data sets. Now this is the main part over here, linear regression from the name itself. Try to understand what is happening over here. We have an input, we have an output. Now we are providing the set of input and output to the model. Now in that case, what is happening? Your model tries to identify a straight line your model tries to identify a straight line based on the input and the output data set provided by you it tries to identify a straight line which it can use which it can use to predict new data sets if you did not understand it hold on we are going to see it as well now this is what your linear regression is all about and uh, this also you should understand theoretically that the number of independent features right if we give the number of independent features as one if we have only one uh, independent features now independent dependent features i have already explained in my previous video so if you have one independent feature that is known as univariate linear regression and in case you have more than one input feature it is known as multivariate linear regression so now let's move ahead now i already told you that what happens is you are giving input and output both you know if you want to understand the let's say uh, weight of a person based on the height of a person right so weight is the output and height is the input now in that case your both input and output will be provided to the model now model will try to derive a correlation between these two features now the correlation is nothing but the straight line that it tries to derive so this red line which you see on the screen this is the linear regression line which it tries to derive now in like over here in our you know almost 10 standard or in our schools we have already understood in the mathematics that a straight line that what is the normal formula for a straight line y is equals to mx plus c right y is the output right then you have mx plus c c is the constant right this is what your line is about so what your model is trying to do here in the linear regression it is trying to find out that line only now if it has that line what it will do is moment you pass any new value of x 
it will automatically derive you the accurate or the most accurate value of y that is what your complete linear regression is all about now here you will have set of formulas set of understanding that you need to develop in order to understand the formulas that we try to use over here now remember that in linear regression what is the goal right what you are supposed to do in the linear regression we have to create a best fit line we have to generate a best fit line that is what why we have to generate y is equals to mx plus c very simple now uh, remember that y is equals to mx plus c is what we have to derive but the notations might differ you know if you learn from let's say andrew ng if you learn from different different uh, sources your y might be denoted by some other notation right so the notations might differ everywhere you learn from but eventually here you are deriving y equals to mx plus c now here remember that the goal is to create a best fit line based on the input data set right now remember that what you see on the screen y is nothing but the dependent variable and x is nothing but the independent variable so it is the input and the dependent variable is the output that you want your model to provide right initially you will train your model based on both dependent and independent variable now if you see this dotted line over here right this is the line that your model has to derive right this is the line of best fit it is also called as regression line y is equals to mx plus c right now the c a what you see over here is nothing but it is this particular value from where your line actually starts right it is the value of the y from where your line start this is nothing but a right and what is m or b in this notation it is nothing but the slope right it is nothing but the slope now if you see this red dot that you see right red dot let's say now uh, if your model has derived this particular line so all the values that it will try to provide you will be on this line only right now if you see this red dot this is the estimated value this is the value which your model has provided for an input independent variable so if your independent variable is here it is providing you an estimated value over here but there might be a case where actual value is actually somewhere else right your actual value might be over here what you see as a green dot so that might be your actual value so there is a difference between your actual value and your estimated value so this is called as the residual error so this is called the error right this is there is a difference between the actual value as well as the estimated value now this is going to happen right because your model might not be 100 percent accurate which is in most of the cases right so if you see the actual value and the estimated value so all the green dots that you see over here these are the actual values and all the estimated values will be on your dotted line so always there will be a difference right now this difference is called as residual error right this difference is called as a residual error and the goal when you try to create this best fit line your goal should always be to minimize this error because lesser the error is the more accurate your output will be right so this residual error has to be as less as possible right so i hope you understood what is the uh, you know theory behind this linear regression so this residual error right it has to be as less as possible so what we usually try to do is we try to sum up all these residual errors right what you see over here we try to sum up all these residual errors and we try to minimize it and how do we minimize it by reducing the cost function now the cost function is something that comes from these residual errors so let me move ahead right so uh, let's talk about this so the very first thing is y is equals to mx plus c now yi is nothing but it is the estimated value right that your model is supposed to provide the value of let's say weight right now theta 1 is nothing but the intercept right theta 1 or you can also call it as c right so this theta 1 is this intercept right that you see over here from where your line starts because your line will not always go from the origin right it will not always go from this point it can go from you know somewhere up which is nothing but the intercept right theta 1 plus theta 2 into x of i x of i is nothing but your input value that you provide because your x can be somewhere here it can be here it can be here right and then your theta 2 is nothing but the slope right it is the coefficient of x it is the slope now if you look at this cost function right now to derive this particular value right to derive y is equals to mx plus c 
what we are trying to do we are trying to reduce the error what error this error right the difference between the actual value and the residual value uh, the actual value and the estimated value we are trying to reduce it and how do we do that using the cost function now what is a cost function now if you see y i of hat minus y i now what exactly it is just this part now y i of hat is nothing but the actual uh, you know y i of hat is nothing but the predicted value right if you go to this particular location uh, this particular equation y i of hat is nothing but the predicted value the output the output weight the output weight minus the actual value right y i is nothing but the actual value right so the estimated value of weight minus actual value right we are getting this difference and then we are summing it so the moment we sum it now you can see the sum symbol right we are summing it now till when we are summing it till the number of input data sets we have so if i if i have given five data points right so my n will be five right so this is nothing but this is the summish summing of all these differences so if you see we are just trying to sum up all these differences now the moment we try to sum up we are also trying to square it right now why we are trying to square it now if you see this particular value is at the top this value right the actual value is at the bottom so the moment you try to do a difference what will happen few differences will be positive few differences will be negative now in this case what we are trying to do is we are trying to square it so that we we do not have to deal with that positive and the negative value so we are just trying to square it now the moment we square it what will happen is we are also dividing it by 1 by n because we are summing it by 1 by n and we are dividing it at by 1 by n now there is a reason to it now if you have understood differentiation concept the concept of differentiation right derivation right basically the moment we use this particular square over here right now if i try to do the derivation of it this 2 will come up at the uh, you know uh, 2 will come up over here that is what is called a derivation part right so th that is one of the reason that we are trying to do a square over here so this is the cost function now this cost function i hope you understood now eventually what we are trying to do we are trying to reduce this value now our main goal to create this y is equals to mx plus c y uh, you know y hat equal to theta 1 plus theta 2 of xi is eventually to reduce this cost function now to reduce this cost function right now to reduce this cost function we have to make sure now if you see like if i go over here you know again you know we have to remember that the notations will be different you know so you have to be acquainted to different to seeing different notations now hypothesis now hypothesis is what we have to develop y equal to mx plus c right here y is h theta of x and intercept is theta 0 and then you have theta 1 of x then you have the parameters you know theta 0 and theta 1 now theta 0 is your intercept right now if your theta 0 is the intercept now if your line passes now if you see if your line is like this if your line passes from this origin right at this point right what will be ha what will happen is your theta 0 will become 0 right because your intercept becomes 0 over here right now this becomes your cost function now this is also what we have already discussed right the difference between the actual and the predicted value and basically your goal is nothing but to minimize this cost function your goal is nothing but to minimize this cost function now to minimize the cost function right if let me try to show you this now if you look at this cost function right for different values of theta 0 and theta 1 when i say different values so let's say your theta 0 is 0 at a moment right is 0 over here now let's say your uh, you know theta 0 has some value your theta 0 can be let's say your theta 0 is equal to 0.5 right your theta 0 can be 0.5 if it starts let's say if your line starts from here right let's say this point is 0.5 right then your theta 0 becomes 0.5 now similarly if your line starts from over let's say again if your line starts from here right and this point is 1 then your theta 0 becomes 1 now for different values of theta 0 and theta 1 if you try to plot a graph right if you try to plot a graph of this cost function this is the graph that you will get
you know this is the graph this is the u shaped or the curved graph that you are going to get so if you see this theta is cost of theta j function j theta function this will be nothing but this will be a u shaped curve you can actually try this out as well you can take this as a homework after watching this video try to plot a graph with different values of you know theta uh, 0 and theta 1 you will actually see this graph now to minimize this function right now if you see to minimize this function what we are doing is we are trying to plot a graph now let's say you know uh, here what will happen is if you see let's say this is one of uh, the u shape curve that you got now in that case the minimum value over here because what we want to do is we want to get the minimum value of theta j right that is our end goal right the minimum the minimum the value of this theta j, uh, j of theta will be the minimum this cost function will be the better your hypothesis will be right now in that case the minimum value of this theta j will be over here right this is the minimum cost where you see this red dot this is the minimum cost function this is the where you actually have to reach so you have to design your the values of your theta 0 and theta 1 in such a way that it reaches this minimum cost function that is what your end goal is now to do that if you see you have to what you have to do is you have to first of all identify a value of theta 0 and theta 1 and then you have to slowly and gradually try to come to this particular point of minima this is called as local minima right this is called uh, this is called as global minima right now in this global minima or the minimum cost right now let's say if i have let's say i try to draw this over here right now let's say my predicted value right now this is my cost function this is my theta uh, j of theta function now this is my cost function now, now, now let's say i define my theta 0 and theta 1 in such a way that i reach to this particular point but my actual uh, i but my actual want will be always to define it in such a way that i reach over here the global minima now if i try to draw a slope over here a gradient over here right and eventually i have to understand that i have to reach over here using the some steps right i have to define my function in such a way that i reach to this particular point now to reach to this particular point what we have is this particular function the what you see over here right theta j minus alpha and j of theta 0 and theta 1 which is nothing but the gradient okay i am just here here if you look at it this is nothing but the gradient right you have to actually slowly decrease the gradient in such a way you have to you have to decrease your theta j in such a way that you use this particular gradient and you have also something called as alpha over here now alpha is nothing but the learning rate right so to understand it even much better if you see over here right this is nothing but the learning rate so alpha is nothing but the learning rate over here and this particular derivative that you see over here this is nothing but the gradient right so j of theta 0 and theta 1 the derivative of this the derivative of this with respect to theta j is nothing but the gradient now that is what multiplied by alpha that multiplied by alpha is eventually going to lead you to the local minima to the global minima over here this particular point right so alpha so if in this basically you have to define alpha in such a way that alpha is nothing but the steps so if i say over here alpha is nothing but this is the alpha is nothing but the steps so you have to define the value of alpha in such a way that your steps are efficient enough to reach to this minimal minimum cost to reach to this global minima in such a way that it uses less number of iterations and accurate number of steps so if you see this learning rate if i use my learning rate alpha to be very small what will happen is it is going to take lot of iterations to reach over here if i use it just right that is what we will reach over here optimally within the correct time period now if my value of alpha is too high right so basically it is just going to it is never going to reach over here because sometimes it will go up sometimes it will go down so that is how this value of alpha actually matters a lot right so i hope you understood that what is this uh, you know uh, 
uh, cost theta function and how we have to actually minimize this cost function using the learning rate and the derivative or, or the gradient of this cost function. Now eventually the gradient of this cost function you know and trying to identify this alpha this particular uh, you know formula is nothing but it is called as convergence theorem it is also called as gradient descent theorem this is nothing but this is called as gradient descent theorem because uh, gradient descent algorithm because eventually it is trying to decrease your uh, you know cost function by trying to get the gradient by trying to get the derivative of your cost function gradient and multiplying it by alpha and then subtracting it from theta of j so eventually what it does it, it reduces your cost function so this is what your gradient descent algorithm was and i hope you understood the you know whole concept of this linear regression so in the next particular video uh, we will try to uh, you know implement linear regression in databricks uh, we will try to see how exactly this is implemented as well but you should know this theoretical concept behind it that what is this gradient descent why we are actually using it right try to plot this graph try to plot this graph using different values of theta 0 and theta 1 you know try to plot this graph you know and i hope you like this particular video and and remember one more thing in fact uh, i forgot to explain this now if you see this particular u-shaped graph right this is the graph that you will see when you have you know uh, one feature and one output now in case you have multiple features then in that case you know you will see some 3d graph which you see on the right hand side over here so it will be kind of a bowel shape 3d graph that you will see in case you have multiple features and there also you have to come to the global minima right so now this point of you know uh, this point is nothing but this is called as global minima right this is our whole objective that we have to reach here right this is our whole objective now to summarize this you know in the linear regression what we have to do we have to find up uh, find a straight line right which is y is equals to mx plus c now our idea is to get the accurate value of c to get the accurate value of m that is what we need now to get that we have something called as cost function which is the difference between the actual and the predicted value we create the root mean square of that difference and that is what is called as cost function so eventually we have to reduce the cost function we have to get our theta 0 and theta 1 in such a way that we reduce the cost function now to reduce this cost function what we do is we try to plot the cost function now plotting of the cost function looks like this now with respect to you know the theta j or theta i now this is the cost function and now to reduce this cost function we create the gradient graph we try to get the gradient and we try to reduce it to get to the local to the global minima right that is where we want to reach now to get that we have something called as gradient descent algorithms so this is what your linear regression is all about i hope you like this particular video do let me know in the comment section if you want me to show you how to exactly plot the graph and you know in that detail also if you want the video do let me know in the comment section but this particular video is pretty much good enough to understand this whole algorithm and even the next video where we will see the hands-on on how to develop it will be you know very good to understand uh, you know the whole linear regression algorithm itself so let me know in the comment section if you really like this uh, video so that it helps me to get the feedback or whether i should be making these videos or not because uh, you know if you are a data engineer then uh, you should know you know the machine learning at least this much what i'm trying to explain so that you know in future it's not just that you know about the data you also know about how to utilize that data with uh, you know upcoming ai world so i hope you like this video thank you so much for being till here